I was looking on my favorite website trying to get lucky and find something free to pick up. That's when I found this beauty being given away. I very carefully drove to the location, picked it up and brought it home. Now it's my turn to figure out if this is even worth my time fixing and using or if I just made a terrible mistake. But once I took the time to really look at it and see what kind of condition it's in, my hopes began to fade very quickly. In today's video, we take a look at the Snapper branded lawnmower and the problem is that I just got it home so I'm not sure if it even works. Now unless you have an issue with your eyesight, if things don't look all that great for this mower, it's hard not to judge a book by its cover, but right now this one's telling me it belongs in the scrapyard. Now I've already made a video about this mower, if you want to see that video, there should be a link to it at the top of the screen or at the end of the video, but before I fix it, I need to give it a quick cleaning, that way I don't get dirt in places like the carb, the fuel tank, or even inside the engine. While I clean this mower, I'm going to talk about just how tough it is to use and maintain one of these things. I know that these have not changed in a really long time and there's a good chance that your parents might have the same brand as the one you have right now. The only difference is the engines and the use of different materials, but everything your parents taught you about having one of these should still apply. The only problem is that sometimes the lessons that your parents tried to give you about using something like this may not have been completely understood and there's a good chance that mowing the lawn was something that you were not interested in at that time. Only when you became an adult the things start to make some sense to you, at least in regards to the lessons that your parents are trying to teach you. Don't worry, it's only natural to be uninterested in things. I mean, you're just a kid. In fact, it would be rather peculiar if you did take an interest in it. Now the most important thing that you need to be aware of is that an engine needs to have oil in it, otherwise you risk damaging it. Now wouldn't it be just awesome if there was a way that you could check the oil level and if it happened to be low then you could also have a way to put more oil into the engine. But why would the oil be low in the first place? Where would all that oil end up? I mean it wouldn't just leak all over the top of the mowing deck, could it? Oh no, that would be just too obvious of an issue to possibly ignore. But let's say that it does and hopefully you'll catch it in time so that it doesn't hurt the engine. In that case we might have to try and start it and see if it has any issues, otherwise there'd be no point in spending any time on this project. So that was not what I would call a very good test run, but the good part is that at least it started and ran, and considering that more than likely this engine was ran low on oil for a really long time, it actually sounds a lot better than I was expecting. So there is also one other major issue with this mower, and that's one of the front wheels is stuck. The strange part was that only yesterday both wheels were stuck, but the other one started rolling on its own. That means if the other one can free itself, that the one that's still stuck has a chance to come loose, but it looks like it's going to need some help doing so. And there's obviously no reason to do a pull test on it because of that bad wheel, but it goes without saying that this thing is really tough to push without picking up the front end. Now it was hard to miss, but this mower was shaking quite a bit which is concerning. If you didn't know it, running over hard objects with your mower can severely damage the blade or bend it and cause it to vibrate while running. Now to see if the blade is severely bent, I'm going to check to see if both sides of the blades are close to the same plane. By using the mark on the screen, I'll use it as a reference point and then rotate the other end of the blade to the mark and see how far it is off from it. Now the surprising part is that the other end of the blade is very close to the same mark, which means more than likely the blade is not bent. Now this test is not very scientific, so I'm not going to take its results as being final, but it is a good visual tool. Now I've been told that gasoline has a shelf life and according to some websites it's only 30 days. So does that mean on the 31st day that the gasoline is stale and can't be used anymore? Of course not. All it means is that it's past its freshness date. Sure you can use it 60 days after you got it from the pump or even 120 days. But after that time it'll have gone through some changes. So yes you can use old gasoline but don't expect the engine to perform well on it. According to the color of this gasoline, I'd say it was at least half a year old, if not more, and it still started and ran, but I have to wonder if what I saw was a bent blade or a bent crankshaft might have been due to the old gasoline instead. The only way to find out is to drain all the fuel from it and put some fresh fuel in it and see if it acts the same way. Now the bolt for the blade was on there extra tight, so that means I need to either start working out more or I need to buy myself a new half inch impact. I've heard that working out can really help out with more than just your physical fitness though. But I've also heard that getting more tools does the same thing and you don't have to change your diet, so that's probably what I need to do. Unfortunately, my doctor doesn't agree with me. 
I'm not sure what the rating is for my Snap-on 3.8 Impact, but since it's not able to break it free, it must be on there pretty tight. Just wait until you see what I have to do to take this off in the repair video. If for some reason you couldn't tell, there's a lot of oil sitting on the mowing deck, and before I do an oil change, I need to clean it off, right? But why? It's just an engine. Shouldn't it be covered in oil? Generally speaking, oil does a great job of lubricating an engine when it's on the inside, not on the outside. I guess if this was an early engine from over 150 years ago, it might be a little different, but we'll try and keep it simple. You really have to wonder just how in the world it got this bad. By the looks of it, I'd say every ounce of oil that was ever in this engine left to find a better job with better insurance and maybe even a better retirement plan. I think they may have been adding oil while it was leaking out because the amount of oil and dirt on this engine is a lot more than 16 ounces. So I have to guess they got tired of adding precious oil to the engine year after year, and instead of spending that money to actually fix the leak, they ended up using that money for oil. But in the end, they finally had enough and threw it away. Now that is only a theory with no data to prove it, but in my mind, it certainly seems like a good possibility. Aside from the tedious task of making sure the oil you put into the engine stays in it, what else do you have to worry about though? Well for me the biggest one is making sure that it survives long term storage during winter or for some reason where it has to be idle for months at a time. Now depending upon where you live, winter can be 3 months or it could be 6 months long and from what I've heard, leaving gasoline alone and unused for long periods can be very detrimental to the health of the fuel system. But does that only apply to lawn equipment? Unfortunately, no. If you find a vehicle in a barn or in a field that you know has not been used in a few years, you're going to find out just what kind of issues you'll have to fix in order to get it working again. Now things are a bit different if you're talking about a vehicle with fuel injection, whether gasoline or diesel, but we'll leave that discussion for a different day. But for engines with carbs, things can turn bad really quickly, mainly depending upon the type of fuel you put into the fuel tank. I only wish there was a book that came with the machine when you bought it new that tells you how to take care of it or maybe even have some troubleshooting guides so that you don't have to take it to the small engine repair shop. Or an even better idea is that they put the book of information on taking care of your machine online so that they don't have to print it and it would be more convenient. Maybe someday when technology gets better we'll be able to access it anytime we need to. So aside from this utopia that I just spoke about, what about the times that you need to take it to the repair shop? Well, you're not going to like the experience and it's really not their fault. Depending on what kind of repair shop you take your machine to, you're going to find a couple of different perspectives. Some of the larger ones also sell equipment and when you bring something in, they'll very lightly try and sell you something. They're going to tell you that the money to repair your machine would be better used to buy a new one instead and that they're having a sale and also have financing available as well. You can't blame them because, in essence, they are correct. If they quoted you a price of almost half the cost of a new machine, you might as well pay a bit more and get a new machine out of the deal instead of paying a lot of money to only have your old machine running again. Now, the other perspective is one that comes from repair shops that only make money on repairs. So yes, they'll take your 45-year-old mower and try to fix it because it's their business model, but be ready for an unbelievable quote. The last perspective is very different from the first two and those of the hobbyist who will take your machine in, work on it, and charge you only a small amount mainly because they're not doing it to make money but instead trying to enjoy their hobby and maybe even save another machine from going to the landfill. These are the unsung heroes in this story so look for them and support them because they're a valuable asset to have. That does bring up a very sobering question, which is what's going to happen in 10 years when the landscape for lawn equipment is going to be drastically different? When you do go to the lawn and garden centers, you're going to find only electric stuff, and if you do happen to find one gas machine, it'll be the floor model, and you'll find out that it's actually sold and just being held on the floor until the next gasoline floor model shows up. The sad part is that you're going to ask to pay for the next gasoline machine ahead of its arrival, only to find out that there's a list of about 20 other customers ahead of you. Welcome to the future. But once battery stuff replaces all these machines that take gasoline and oil, everything will be much better. You won't have to worry about pollution from these newer machines because they get their power from the sun, wind, or from the ground. All you have to do is take them out of the box, leave them in the sun for a couple of hours, and once fully charged, you'll have whisper quiet operation free of any guilt. The issue is that I'm getting conflicting information from both sides of the aisle. Some would say the best choice is to keep my old machine and try to maintain it so they don't have to make new batteries and machines. But then you have the other side that says choosing the new machines will help out in the long term despite what it takes to produce them. Either way, someone is making tons of money so it's up to you who gets that money. 
But who deserves to get your hard-earned money? The oil companies that make the oil and gasoline, or the oil companies that use the oil to make plastics for both kinds of machines, or is it the oil companies that make the diesel to power the machines to help get the raw materials to yet again make both kinds of machines? It's such a tough choice to choose between oil company A, oil company B, or the lesser known oil company C, which has been in business for the last three generations. Now the best advice I've received so far was to use a real mower which has no engine and all you have to do is push it across the yard but there are a few issues with it. The first issue is they're kind of tough to use, especially if you're on a hill. The second is the amount of effort you have to exert. It might be okay if you're young, but once you're in your 60s, this might not be a good idea unless you want to go out doing what you enjoy. And if that's the case, I've got two if not three other options that went over doing the yard, most requiring me to be inside, except that one thing which we won't talk about. The other thing you have to worry about is that real mowers need some maintenance to keep them working well, but as you know, most don't like the idea of having to take care of anything and responsibilities are other people's problems, but not theirs. But if you choose to use a real mower, I applaud your efforts to give it to the oil companies A, B, and C. With your efforts, we'll be able to slow down their growth and maybe the consumers will win over big business. Now, if you made it this far, you'll have realized that most of this video has been sarcastic and seen from the perspective of someone who might be clueless as to what it takes to have and use something like a gasoline mower. And for that, I want to thank you for listening. Now it's time to be serious, so get ready and hold on to your hats because this might ruffle a few feathers. Now, this mower was the worst looking mower I've seen in a long time since the Poland mower from a year ago that had a crack in the mowing deck from the front all the way to the back. The only way this mower got this bad was extreme negligence, and when I say that, I'm unfortunately not kidding. While trying to repair this mower, I found out just what can happen when you don't care how you use your mower, and it takes the worst turn I've ever seen. In fact, it's so bad that I had to get out my balance scale to weigh my choices. I've never had to deal with something like this before, and to be honest, this mower is going to test me like I've never been tested before. To be quite honest, if you don't think you can handle taking care of a machine like this mower, don't get it. Have someone mow your lawn for you, and if you don't want to do that, then get a battery mower and stay with batteries for as long as possible and stay away from these. You're going to be better off, and the gasoline machines will be better off as well, and while you're at it, you might as well consider getting an electric blower and trimmer as well. There's nothing wrong with knowing your own limits or understanding yourself, and if you're aware of that you're better off with a different option, that's probably the best scenario. As for this mower, the damage has been done and figuring out what my next option is going to be is going to require a lot of thought and maybe even a few dollars to complete. So in the next video, you're going to be shocked at what I find out about this mower and maybe then the sarcasm at the beginning of this video will finally make some sense. So my question is, have you ever seen a mower in worse shape than this mower and if so, what ended up happening to it? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.